Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Well, we left last week on a bit of a cliffhanger. So let's pick it up and make a start from here. Let's hope we meet some of the uh, other characters here as well. So, my eyes closed for just a moment, and then... Ladies and gentlemen, I think the game may actually have started! Day one. Bright daylight struck my eyes. I winced and turned away. It struck me again. It beat me repeatedly around the head for at least 40 minutes. At first, I didn't pay attention, as I wasn't fully awake yet. On my own, my legs carried me towards the door. Damn, looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. But there were no doors. I looked around the bus and realized it wasn't a good, old, worn out Marco Polo. Instead, the bus was an Icarus model, new. I was frozen in shock. How? By not moving. I thought that was obvious. What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No. I must be dead. I touched my body wildly, slapped myself in the face a few times, struck the back of the, the front chair with my forehead. It's clear. I'm either still alive or, being dead, you can still feel the pain. But how could all this happen? Maybe I was asleep for too long and ended up in the bus depot, where they took the doors off. And then what? Did they put me in another bus? I rushed out and took a look around. Greenery wherever I looked, tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers. Summer! But how? It was winter just a moment ago. I had a terrible headache as if my head was going to explode. Step by step, I started to recall. I'll be back. A long road running towards the high horizon. Forests, plains, fields, lakes and forests again. Then some lakes. Then some lakes in a forest, and a forest built on top of the lake. It was all rather plain. I think I was sleeping, but then... How can I remember all of it? And then... Ellipsis. And then... Another ellipsis. A gap. A third ellipsis. Some girl leaning over me. She is softly whispering something in my ear. Then a gap again. And then I woke up here. No, not there, here. 
Who is that strange girl? Or was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Was she the bus driver? Then I need to find her. And the best way to look for her is with my eyes, is to get away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, then stopped, hesitating where to go, running out of sights, and finally ran in the direction where the bus probably came from. Ellipsis. Re ellipsis. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Thoughts become clearer and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on a roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping hot air. In any case, the run did its work. The fear withdrew for a little. Maybe I'm really just dreaming. Though after recalling my self-harm, I immediately rejected the idea. I'm neither dreaming nor dead. A narrow road was running through the field and far into the distance. The, that exact road from my dream. I must be very far away from home. And it is not that it was winter yesterday and complete summer now. It was about the environment. Of course, the summer is usually like that, green and hot, but here everything is not just like in real life. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists from the 19th century. The grass is just too lush. The bushes are not like what bushes should be. They're so thick that you can't see anything through them. Like tree tops, honestly. And the trees themselves? They're like bushes. The forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they closed their even ranks and now were just waiting in order to advance into the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus. It looked back at me, which was now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear took over me again. And those power lines. There must be people here. The power line people. But what does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Even hell can't have power lines. Baking and roasting the sinners is just too old-fashioned. Let's microwave them. I must have reached the point of no return, after which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have the choice, I'd rather pick the second option. I slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was frightening. Buses tend to be. But I'm... More, not likely to find the answer in the fields or in the woods, and this wretched bucket of screws is the only kind of link I have with the real world. I should carefully scout the area. A brick wall with gates crowned with Sovianok sign, statutes of pioneers on their sides, and a road sign nearby showing the bus route number 410. The trip's taking a bit too long today, I smirked. A person may start acting inadequately in extreme situations. Something like, th something like is probably happening to me now. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gates, no damage on the walls. Sovia knock. Knock knock. Who's there? Sovio. No, let's not do that one. What could have a name like that? Possibly a Sovianok. Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. And this camp seems to be working. Of course, the simplest explanation, logically, explains nothing at all. That strange girl, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp. Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleep, from hallucination to time and space shift. None was worse than the other, but there was really no way to pick a single one. Then it all came to me. I can try to make a phone call. I took out my cell phone and dialed the first number from my contact list. But instead of, a sig uh, instead of signal strength bars, the screen was showing a thick cross. 
All right, there may be no signal in such a backward country place. Though I cannot be the only... Though I cannot be the only who... Right, let's add some words to that sentence, shall we? Though I cannot be the only one who got here. Buses don't go on their own. I checked the bus from all sides to make sure it wasn't a hallucination. Bits on the dirt of dirt on the bottom, some rust here and there. Faded out paint and worn out tires. I thought this was a new bus. No, this is definitely a very ordinary Icarus. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly see fall asleep. I gave a nervous chuckle. <laughs> it came out by itself, sporadically. Because it wasn't the right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curb zone behind, beside the bus and started waiting. My patience didn't last long. My anxiety seemed to have reached the top and I was started going slightly mad. My patience and my anxiety linked arms and wandered off. In such situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only void and darkness. Is this how it will all end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much, so many things that I had no time for yet. I was taken over by the idea. That was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair, surely. I'm worse, no worse than anyone. God, why? Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? But my outcries were only heard by the speechless statue of pioneers and by a bird in a tree, which immediately flapped her wings and took off, having cried something in its own bird language, as if laughing at the idiot who dared interrupt its after-dinner nap. At least I was breathless with my weeping, and just laid quietly, sobbing from time to time. Ellipsis. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. Mind cleared up a bit, as if terror from the fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? Doesn't look like an experiment, either. If this is some crazy coincidence, then it probably carries no threat. Anyway, for now, it seems there is no danger. The panic was soon gone. It left to find my anxiety. Of course, the blood was still pounding in my head and my hands were still shaking, but at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there is nothing I could really change anyway. So, no matter much, no matter how much I think I or, or get mad, it would only make things worse. There is no point making guesses until I get some facts straight. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging about here. The camp, if of course it was really a camp, looked as the only place where people could be, so I decided to walk there, and hardly have I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them, wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time, nor did my libido. Then again, pioneer, pioneer universe? The, the pi pioneer... Ah. <laughs> then again, pioneer uniform in the 21st century. Then again, girls here? I froze, unable to make a step. I felt very much like running away. Running as far away as I could from this place, far from the bus, gates, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta. Just run, free like wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by and winking to the galaxies. Run, becoming a pulsar ray and turning into vestigial radiation. Run to face the unknown. Run no matter where, as long as it's far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer. 
and smiled. I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts work despite of consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cognitive processes, the remaining 95 are always busy sustaining life, in particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. Now that's a blooming good excuse, isn't it? I desperately wanted to get less complicated and stop thinking in formal quotes from the encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid, out of place, as if taken from the internal monologue of a hero of some junky soft-colour crime fiction book. A pretty Slavic face, long braids looking like two armfuls of fresh hay, and blue eyes in which you could drown. Blub. 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 I, you must have just arrived. Mm, let's reply. Um, um, yeah. All right then, welcome. She smiled broadly. The top of her head fell off. Strange, it looked as if uh, I had just a normal girl in front of me. Bah, I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seemed better. But what should I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was a human, or run away? Or whatever. Whatever. The blood was pumping unbearably in my head, tearing it apart from the inside. A little bit more, and the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the hideous contents of my skull. Yeah, what's so funny about that? The girl gazed over me. It sent shivers down my spine and my knees started to tremble. Nothing. Great then. Great? What's great about that? Suddenly I felt like letting it all be. The bus behind me, the winter yesterday and the summer today. Take off the itchy pullover and just believe that it was all real. That it was all meant to be. And that it was all at last. It was for the better. And you must probably know. You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look. You go straight into the square, then turn left, and you'll see small cabins. She pointed at the gates, as if I knew what was behind them. Dmitrievna. Okay. Dmitrievna? is a patrionic, uh, a derivative of a person's father's name. And this came Dmitri. Dmitrievna. Okay, all right. Put, and I really, really apologize for mangling the Russian words here. Put by Russians after some person's first name as a sign of respect or formal address. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dmitrievna for the cabin is. Yeah, that's going to work well. I, um, got it? Of course, I didn't. And I've got to go. The girl waved her hand at me, put it back in her pocket, and disappeared behind the gates. It seemed as if, for her, I was something ordinary. How dare she! And all this show with the bus and the travels in waking or sleeping were troubling only me, while here everything was just like it was supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform, shoeing. Are they making a historical reconstruction here? I hope I wouldn't find Lenin standing atop of an armoured car at the square. But even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. Mere fifty metres ahead, small a small one-storey house had popped up on the left side. And the billboard near the door said clubs. I was about to come closer. When the door suddenly opened and a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave an impression of being, of bearing a torment for the fate of the whole mankind with a truly universal sorrow. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. Damn, I knew I should have shaved this morning. I froze too, considering what was best to do. 
Approach first or wait until she shows some initiative. It might take some time. Or maybe run away after all. Though this last option was constantly suggested only by my self-preservation instinct, at least that's what I'd like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but one far from being the most logical. If this instinct played poker against my deductive abilities, the results would be predetermined. And those deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting me that there was no need to be afraid of this girl. Suddenly somebody jumped out of the nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it. Such exact re reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from the distance and was probably younger than both pioneer girls. At the gates and this girl at the door of the clubs. At last I decided to come closer, but the USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped to the first girl and started telling something while soaring the air. Exactly what? We'll find out next time! Hey, we've met some girls! Isn't it great? Okay, guys. I'm going to leave it there. I hope you guys have had fun. I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and vote for the live stream. Thank you, and good night.